So in the last couple of videos, we looked at some examples where we used either version of the definition here for the derivative at a point to determine the equation of a tangent line, right? So given, given some value for c and a function, we can plug c in, get f of c. That's the y value for the uh, point on the tangent line. And then we can use the definition of the derivative to get the slope. Once you've got a point and a slope, you've got the equation of your line. Um, now, uh, derivatives would be fairly inefficient if we had to go and use a limit definition every time we wanted to calculate a slope, right, or, or any kind of derivative. If we had to do this for every value, um, we probably wouldn't be very happy if we had to do this over and over again every time. So through the rest of the chapter on derivatives, what we're going to do is we're going to develop tools to calculate derivatives quickly and efficiently by, by proving a number of theorems, developing rules that will give us tools for computing derivatives. And, and the first step along the way is to realize uh, that the derivative actually becomes a function, right? Because you know, it, it's a little bit harder to do here. Um, here it's, it's harder to kind of put some dependence because we're already using x as the limit variable. Um, and that's why this first formula, although it's sometimes convenient for calculating slopes, ultimately when we want to go ahead and define the derivative as a function, we modify this one, right? And, and the key here is to realize that in a lot of examples, you can, you can, it doesn't matter what c is, right? So if we, if we did something like, you know, so if, if f of x is something like, let's say, x squared plus 2x, right? We can write down that f prime of c is going to be the limit, h going to 0, f of c plus h minus f of c over h. And we'll just leave this as a c. And, and what do we get? We get the limit as h goes to 0. Okay, um, This is going to be c plus h squared plus 2 times c plus h. Subtract. So we put x equal to c c squared plus 2c, whole thing divided by h, right? And we can even simplify this if we want. So limit h going to 0. Here we have c squared plus 2ch plus h squared plus 2c plus 2h. Push that minus sign through, minus c squared minus 2c, all over h. Now, it looks a mess, but c squared minus c squared cancels, right? 2c minus 2c cancels, right? Again, the stuff in the numerator that doesn't depend on h, it's gone. It cancels out because we know uh, this was supposed to be a 0 over 0 limit, right? So the numerator, um, everything has to be multiple of of h, right? Because we want it to go to 0 when h goes to 0. So it's all gone. Everything else has an h in it. So we get the limit as h going to 0. So we have h times. So we have uh, 2c from here plus h from here plus 2, right? h out of there, out of there, out of there, over, over h. Again, we can cancel our h's. We let h go to 0, which makes that guy disappear. And we have 2c plus 2 for our answer. Okay? And now the key thing here is to realize that Nothing in this limit process depended on the value of c, right? I can plug in any number I want for this c and replace c by that number all the way through. I will get this corresponding result, right? So changing c here would be the same thing as changing c there. And in fact, I could have just said, hey, you know what? Make this c, make it an x, right? Make it an x, make it an x, right? Everywhere through, it's going to be x. Okay, x, 
and this is 2x plus 2, right? And so what I could have done is I could have just said that f prime as a function of x is 2x plus 2, okay? And so this allows us to make a definition. We can actually define We can define the function f prime by, well, we define it by this limit. So we say f prime of x is equal to the limit h going to 0, f of x plus h minus f of x over h with the, with the usual, um, you know, warning that this, is, this only makes sense if the limit exists, right? So this new function f prime, um, you'll notice that it's going to have a domain which is at best equal to the domain of the original function, right? So, so it's the derivative in the sense that this is a new function that is derived from the old function. Right? Um, so f of x has to be defined because it's here in the limit, right? Uh, but not only do we need f of x to be defined, we also need to make sure that this limit exists. And it can happen that there are points in the domain of your original function where that limit doesn't exist, and so the domain for f prime could be smaller. Um, okay? In fact, it's, it's even possible to come up with functions that are defined everywhere, and in fact, functions that are continuous everywhere um, that do not have a derivative at any point. Um, really strange, bizarre functions that you'll never have to worry about in a calculus course. Um, but they do exist, they are out there, weird things like that can happen. Uh, but for now, the main thing we got to realize is that we can use this limit to define a function, right? Um, the limit depends on h, not on x. Once h goes to 0, h is the limit variable, right? Once the limit is carried out, you get something which only depends on x, right? There's no h dependence left. Um, so that's the derivative as a function. We're going to talk a little bit about notation, and then we're going to do some more examples.